It's our last sermon on tell, but you'll hear a lot more about tell throughout the year. And today we're going to talk about say what? Tell your neighbor, say what? Now for weeks, what have we studied? We've studied and discussed that everything in our lives communicates. Everything communicates. Am I right? Is that what we've been talking about? Everything communicates, everything talks, everything speaks, our mannerisms, and our lives actually are educational to those around us. They are educating others about our life. Whether we like it or not, when we're around other people, we educate them about our lives. And so uh, we've picked up mannerisms and we've picked up actions from the time that we were babies. In fact, they even say scientists have, have picked up on this, that uh, children, babies in the mother's womb, will also pick up songs and, and pick up things about our lives, even in the mother's womb. So all that has gone on, the way you act and the way I act, and the way I, my manners and my mannerisms and, my, and your uh, charisma or lack thereof is all from the time we were children, and it all speaks, right? Shout, it speaks. Now, we were also, we couldn't go through tell without talking about the, the possibly the biggest and most important way that our life communicates, and that's with words, with words. And so uh, I think you agree this, we, with this. We, all, we, we were taught to speak when we were very young children, right? Hello, are you with me this morning? We were taught to speak when we were very young children. Um, uh, some of our first words were what? Mama, huh? Dad, dad. Come on, everybody say that. Mama, dad, dad. Now, if you didn't have any vocabulary and you could say that, now you got a couple words. Can I get an amen? As we grew, we got older and we, be we could comprehend more. We went to school uh, <laughs> and we learned more and more, more and more about words. Am I right, church? Now, Stay with me now. Say, somebody say, say what? <laughs> As our vocabulary uh, uh, grew, we, we began to explore how these words can be put together and how they can communicate, right? Uh, how to ask for things, how to communicate about things. And then, now depending on a lot of, I got to jump somewhere, uh, depending on many situations and circumstances, determines how advanced or how basic or somewhere in between our use of words to communicate will be. Will you agree, agree with that? Now, unfortunately, some people use speaking in a very vulgar, come on church, and coarse manner. Have you ever heard such vulgarity as you hear this day, these days? Am I right? Am I in the wrong church? Come on, you can, I know it's not you. Say it, it's about other people. Come on, right? Vulgar and coarse, the, in a vulgar and coarse manner that people use words today. Now, others use words wisely. And they use them, uh, they think before they say anything. Have you ever not thought before you said anything? Can I get an oh yeah? Now, some people though do think before they say anything and they try to build others up somebody say that's good all around them they're constantly using words to build people up and of course there are some that use words to tear people down and to belittle others when someone is around you and they're using words to talk bad about someone else it is because it's a reflection that there is something in their life that needs a little attention let me try over here I said <laughs> when we when we use words to belittle someone and put them down it's it's almost a hundred percent of the time that there's the same thing or other things that are in our lives that need attention so we try to make somebody look smaller so that we look bigger and more important. Well, I'm going to turn right here. I got to get some help somewhere. 
Now, let's see. <laughs> let's see who would agree with this. Some people talk a lot. Shout amen, somebody. Some people talk a lot. <laughs> and some people, do you know some people, they don't say very much. Am I right? Now, who's smarter? Don't shout out loud. Don't shout out loud. Because this is what the Holy Ghost gave me to give you. Watch this on the screen. No words can be as bad as wrong words. Do you know that silence can mean that we agree with some things? Well, I don't agree with that. Well, or have you been silent about it? Now, I know that we got to be in love, right? Come on. We should use our words in love. But, but a lot of times people are silent on issues because what? Or maybe they say, you know what? I'm, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. But by being silent, it can mean I agree with that. So say it with me. No words can be as bad as wrong words. Now, would you agree with this? I'm getting somewhere. Tap your neighbor three times in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and say he's getting somewhere. Now, just because a person is very, has a very intelligent use of vocabulary does not necessarily mean that that person is a person that we should admire or follow. Say amen, somebody. Just because they have a colorful use of vocabulary doesn't necessarily mean that we have to follow them or admire them. Why would I say that? Because they may communicate that way in public, but be a very different person in private. Shout amen now. Now watch, I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach on something this morning. The very lowest form of communication is human to human. You with me? That is the lowest level of speech. Some people think it's the highest. But the lowest level of talking is human to human. Now, it is very necessary that we communicate human to human, right? Social media sometimes is trying to get us to stop speaking eye to eye and person to person. Social media is not to take the place of human interaction. Say amen, even the young millennials in here. Say amen, y'all. No, but it's true. God can use social media, and he does. But they cannot take the place of humans talking to humans one-on-one. -on -one. And especially when we build each other up, and especially when the word of God gets in there. Come on. Would you agree with this? People have risen to high places of prominence simply by the use of words. Huh? But church, we don't have time for that. Because watch what the Lord told us at the beginning of this study. The signs of the times we live in dictate the urgency of the moment. Oh, read that out loud with me, everybody. Ready, read. The signs of the times we dictate the urgency so it's urgent God is saying it's urgent that we get it right everything is communicating from us which includes our use of words so wouldn't it be important to us all to not only know the highest form of the use of words in God's eyes but also when we know this Change whatever needs to be corrected to begin using our words at their highest degree. Would you agree with that? We want to use our words at the highest degree. Human to human is the lowest form. How many want to know the highest form of using words? Wave at me. The greatest way we can use our words. Well, watch. You've got to go to the word of God to find that out. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us about words. It says, ready, read. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Would you agree to that? Listen to what the, uh, uh, king, they think, they, they're almost sure King Solomon wrote this, one of the wisest men ever to walk the earth. He said this, there can be death 
in our tongues and there can be life in our tongues. And those that choose one or the other, you're going to eat the fruit of that. Let me ask you, what is in your words? What are you using your words to do? What are you on that phone or uh, come on and listen, words can be typed out as well. <laughs> and also watch this words. God heard our words and he knows what we're saying. Can I get an amen? Now, God is so cool. Did you ever have like a little, <laughs> a little boyfriend or a little girlfriend in elementary? Come on, somebody that you liked. Somebody you wanted to holler at. Come on. Huh? Somebody. What did you do in elementary? You got a piece of paper out. And you put, do you like me? <laughs> we made a box and said yes. We made a box and said no. But sometimes we put maybe too. Just in case, you know, on the side, you know. Are y'all with me today? God is so cool. Oh, y'all did that. Y'all blushing. Y'all all blushing. Y'all all did that. Do you like me? Boy, we was hoping that she or he would mark yes, right? Third grade, you all that in a bag of chips, right? You know, come on. Now watch. God did the same thing, Miss Robin, to human, to, to mankind. In Deuteronomy 30, 19. He said, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now stop right there because I don't know how long the pause is, but God is saying, mark the box that you want today. If you want life, mark the box life. If you want death, mark the box death. But I'm here to tell you, God jumped over the fence and he marked the box for us. He said, choose life, therefore. Shout amen, somebody. That both you and your descendants may live. Amen? I know, Remy, I do that to people. Listen now. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. God is saying today to us, church, choose life. Choose words carefully. Pay attention right here now. I won't be much longer. Pay attention to this. We must put words of life in our mouth. Too many of the body of Christ. Listen, it is normal to hear what people out there are saying because they're not born again, many of them. But what's terrible is the body of Christ is talking just like the world. Hello? We got the same words of death in us and therefore we wonder why we're going through the things that we're going through. He said, well, that's a, just a figure of my speech. A what? A figure of my... We are creating with our words. Watch now. I want to show you something. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man. He formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a what? You know what one translation says? Man became a speaking spirit like his God. See, God is looking over our words. We are speaking spirits. Well, pastor... Come on, Pastor Steve, I didn't mean anything by it. In the law of heaven and earth, in God's court of spiritual law, it always means something, what we say. We must quit, number one, tearing one another apart. We must quit tearing other Christians apart. Yeah, but they're this religion or that religion. Or, oh, we better quit that. Listen, religion didn't save nobody. Jesus is the Savior. However, people are got to work out their own plan of salvation with fear and trembling. Am I right about it? Who made us the judge? Come on, church. Who made us the judge of other people? Who made us the judge of each other? 
Who made us the judge of people that are living in sin? They need to be told, tell that God is a savior, that God is a lover, that God is a deliverer. God will set you free. Shout yes, somebody. I want to teach you something right quick. Am I doing okay? About what's called, there's always the law of first mention. If God said something first in Genesis or anywhere throughout the Bible, you find God say something. You and I, the devil himself, an angel, uh, the best preacher you know, has no right or can change the law of first mention. When God says it first, that's what he wants throughout eternity. I'm going to show you the highest form of the use of words. It happened with Adam in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19. Out of the ground, watch, one day he came to Adam and he, he made every beast of the field and every bird of the air. And he brought them to Adam to see what he would. What? Well, you know, he didn't write it on a piece of paper. Or, or chisel it in a stone. How do you call something? You. The first time we ever see the man of God, Adam and Eve speak is when they're using words to create and give identity. Do you see it with me? And what? Ever Adam, not God. God didn't step in, Francis, and say, "Uh, uh, uh that's not a cow. That doesn't look like a cow. You blooming idiot, Adam. Don't, what, what you doing, calling that a cow? Don't you know that's something?" No. God so honored that man, Tina, that whatever Adam said it was is what it is today. And watch, I'm gonna jump the fence. What we are calling situations is exactly what they are today. I'm here to tell you, we can give things a new identity. We can bring things back to life. Is your marriage in shambles? I'm here to tell you, God wants to want you to speak life. Is your children in shambles and out and acting crazy? God wants you to put his word in your mouth and speak his word over it and quit saying what everybody else is saying. Yeah, but most of my family call them crazy. I don't care if they call them crazy. I call them saved. I call them delivered. I call them living for God. I declare they're going to be mighty in the household of faith. Come Come on, somebody, or go ahead and give the Lord a great big clap, if you will. Whatever, Jim, he called them. We've got to start calling things. See, that's the highest form of communication. Here it comes. Write this down. It's when we use our words to bring life to any situation and I submit to you, the most powerful way to do that is when we put God's word, the very words of life, in our mouth. God's word has the power to bring life and change to anything or anyone in need. But those words need an anointed vessel to work through. Are y'all with me this morning? An anointed vessel. Do you know why the angel had to shut Zacharias' mouth? It's no telling what he would have named uh, John the Baptist. They said, there's no Johns in your, in your family. What is his name? Watch, Zacharias was a man of God and he was going to get even the timing of the birth of Jesus out of order if he didn't name John correctly. So what did God do? Mm, shut. Boy, it'd be good today if God would shut some mouths, wouldn't it? Uh, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying as you play, Allie, as you play with your cold self. Now watch this. <laughs> uh, 
Miss Kathy Broussard, words, the word of God is yearning to be released from a man or woman, boy or girl of God. Yearning to be released into the atmosphere. Miss Kathy Kaspersky says it all the time. The, the atmosphere is groaning. It's, it's pulsating, waiting for the sons and the daughters of God to be what they're supposed to be. And the only way it's going to happen is when we take God's word, put it in our mouth, release it out there. But I sound stupid. I sound silly. I, I, it seems crazy, yeah? But when they come to Christ... When they live for God, when they get set free, say amen to that. Oh, you're going to be glad you didn't say what Taunt Nunu and Nonk Frank was saying. You're going to be glad that you said what God was saying. Am I right about it? I don't care if the principal himself or herself comes to you and says, your kid has a, your kid has a problem. Your kid has a problem. You, don't deny they may have some issues. Can I get an Amen. Memo, memo's watching. You was getting calls all the time. I know, and uh, but she wouldn't allow anyone to say that I would not be what I am today. I'm sure, CEO. It didn't look like it a lot of times. <laughs> 3 a.m. staggering in, making a ham sandwich. Not a sandwich. Sandwich. Y'all ever ate a sandwich? Mama Dean, she'd come in there and I'm sure she wanted to knock me in the head, but instead she'd bring me some extra Oreo cookies and try to love me into the kingdom of God. Because you see, I don't know what you heard about me. My testimony's rough, but she wouldn't allow those words. She spoke what God was showing her in her heart. She spoke, my boy will live for God. Some of you, listen, most of you, we've got to change what we're saying, y'all. We've got to change this thing and tell the world what God says and quit. They know what the doctor says. They know what the banker says. They know, come on, what all the people of the community, the naysayers say. But God's word is higher. I said God's word is greater. Let's speak his word over every situation. Well, how long? I don't know. Say it till we see some change. How long will it take? I don't know. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharp. It works. But it won't work if it's not released. And faith can't work in an unforgiving heart. We show our unforgiveness. Not unforgiven. Faith can work in an unforgiven heart. Non-believers get, say, uh, get healed, right? But faith cannot work in a forgiven heart that has unforgiveness. And that's shown by the words that we speak. Watch what God says. I'm about to close. Say amen to that. <laughs> I heard a lot of them. Isaiah 55 and 11, Brother Colt. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, God says. It shall not return to me. How does God's word return to him? Does it hit the earth and bounce back at him? Here's how God's word is returned to him. By your stripes I was healed. Are you healed? In God's eyes I am. But how do you feel? Ah, that doesn't have any bearing on the thing. He took that awful beating at the whipping post so I could put it in my mouth. How long? Until I see change. What if it never works and you go to be with the Lord one day? On the other side of that is the greatest healing I ever had. Amen? Come on. Amen? It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what? what I please it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it some things are in the condition they are in because of what we've been calling them well pastor Steve isn't it a lie to call it anything else I call it like I see it and it's going to remain like you see it Jesus brother Dave had some stuff to say about words there's so much to say about words somebody say say what Here's what you say. 
Watch Jesus in Matthew 12, 33. You're going to either make your tree good and its fruit good, or you're going to make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by what? What kind of fruit's coming out of us? How do people know that there's something in there that's changed? By the fruit that comes out. Amen? You brood of vipers. I don't want to be called a snake. What about you, huh? Come on. Brood of vipers. How can you being evil or twisted speak good things? Speak. For out of the abundance of the... How does that abundance get in that heart? Huh? It gets there by what we're saying. Watch now. Watch. Uh, a good man out of the good treasure of his what? Of what? We're earthen vessels with a great treasure. And that treasure is the word of God. I am telling you, saints of God, children of God, people of God, family of God, you and I can change the whole world. We can change this community. We can change our families. If we will, come on, get off our do nothing, get in the word, put the word in our mouth till it gets in our heart and watch God back his word. He'll do it. He'll back his word. How many times? Every time. Huh? The good treasure brings forth good things. Evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what? Evil things. But I say to you, watch Jesus is now using words. Every idol for that word, write this down. Inoperative, faithless word. Every Inoperative, no, no operation, no. In fact, that word means employment. If your words don't have an employed, if they're not employed, they don't have a job to do. In Jesus' eyes, they're considered idle, inoperative, non-working, of no value. Men shall speak, they'll give account of it in the day of judgment. Watch now, that's not fear. That means change what we say. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be what? Enough said? Somebody say, say what? What's some things we need to speak life and God's identity into? Watch this. Number one, here it comes. Family. Number two, children. Number three, our physical bodies. Number four, our church. I said our church. I want to see revival, Pastor Steve. I want to see revival. Well, are you coming revived? Yeah, but I was taught that the, it's the pastor or whoever's behind here. That's who's got to get me. Get, no, you come revived. I said, you come revived. I want to see something, then come bring it. Bring it. Come on, somebody shout, bring it. We got to bring it. Always putting it off on someone else. Oh, someone else. I'm not seeing what I used to see. I'm not seeing, well, you want to see something? Bring it. Bring some anointing. I didn't feel anything today. Well, my God, you look like prune juice. Can I get an amen? Look, all stoved up, chalked up. Can I get an Come on, we got to get loose. Huh? Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> we should speak into our school. We have a school here, Harvest Time Christian Academy. Come on, y'all. And we should speak into our schools in the parish. Come on, y'all. Our finances. Why are they so bad? You're calling them bad. Why don't you get promoted? Well, they put a freeze on promotion. Who said? The boss. Well, I know one higher than that boss. Can I get? Hey! <laughs> I got to back off here. All right. Community. <laughs> Let's speak life and I, God's identity into our community. And last but not least, let's speak life and God's identity into our future. 
Huh? Brother Colt, you know how important words are to God? He developed the entire plan of salvation around what we say. Stand with me, if you will. If you want to jot the last scripture down, it'll come up right here. Romans 10, 9, 10, and 13. 13 will come up after a while. Hey, put that statement for me, Stacy. Watch this. Why do we want to put God's words in us? Watch. Empty wagons rattle the loudest. Ooh, put that in our spiritual pipe and smoke it, huh? I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like, well, how much word? I ain't got time for the word. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, scripture. Let's get off this, Stacey. They don't like me anymore. Last scripture. Ready? Read. If you confess, let's, say, let's put I. If I confess with my... With my what? The Lord Jesus and believe in my that God has. I will be for with the one believes unto and with the confession. Give the Lord a hand, y'all. Brother Colt, the very essence of salvation is by our confession. Why did we get saved and then change the process? It's the same process that we get our child saved. How? By using God's word in our mouth. It's how we got saved. It's the highest form of communication. Somebody shout, say what? what? Shout, "Say say what? Tap your neighbor three times in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and tell them, say what? Let's flip it. Say, what you gonna say? Or like Ray Charles say, what you say? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That came. Sheila shouldn't have did it. I know. But I'm real. What you see is what you get. And I believe all of us, we haven't seen anything yet. Because we're going to change the way we talk to each other. Seasoned with salt and mercy. Huh? With grace. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe someone here said, you know, now I see how to get saved. That I must believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. Well, that's exactly what you have to do. What do I believe in my heart and what do I have to confess with my mouth? That God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says he'll come into your life, make you a new person, and you'll never be the same. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one's looking around. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Steve, it's the most simple thing. I see it now. I must be, I want to get saved. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. If that's you and you want to believe today and receive Jesus, lift your right hand. Pick it up high and put it back down. God bless that hand. God bless. I saw another one. Would there be another that would say, I want to receive Jesus today. I want to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. One more. Any more hands would go up to say today, I receive Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. If you lifted your hand, I want you to give me the opportunity to pray with you. Will you come? If you lifted your hand, will you come right here and let me pray with you? Any of you?